Deep dish pizza is not only not better than New York pizza, <laughs> it's not pizza. <laughs> it's a <laughs> casserole. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't thought to complete your deep dish pizza by putting some canned onion rings on top of it. <laughs> it's a cornbread biscuit which you've melted cheese on and then in defiance of God and man and all things holy, you poured uncooked marinara sauce atop the cheese, atop <laughs> the cheese, on top the sauce, naked, cold, on display like some sort of sauce hooer. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I'm using Jon Stewart's notorious rant as an excuse to take a look at maybe the most controversial style of pizza, Chicago deep dish. Now, I'm a New Yorker, so I had to retrieve this pizza in full disguise and under cover of darkness, but to be completely honest, I like Chicago-style pizza. It's got a nice, deep, thick crust that ends up chewy and crunchy rather than bready and soft, and it has a notoriously large amount of cheese, sauce, and meats. What is not to like? I wouldn't do something so insane as to compare it to New York-style pizza, but as something all its own, I'm into it. So let's get started with the foundation of our pizza, the crust. We're starting with eight and one quarter ounces of room temperature water, to which we're going to add one packet or two and one quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast, along with a teaspoon of sugar, which is going to act as a nice little snack for our yeast while we let it bloom for 10 minutes. This is both a way to jumpstart your yeast's efficacy and make sure that it's alive and well. After 10 minutes, if you got some nice foamy junk like this, you're ready to start adding the other ingredients. First, we're going to whisk together the dry stuff, 12 and a half ounces of all-purpose flour, two and a half ounces of medium grind cornmeal, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Go ahead and tiny whisk to combine, make sure that everything's all good and homogenous, and then it's time to get it wet, or rather add it to the wet ingredients. So into the bowl with the yeast and the water and sugar it goes, along with one third of a cup plus two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Affix dough hooks and get to stir, and we're just going to let this go on low speed for one or two minutes until the dough clears the side of the bowl, and then we're going to crank up the speed to medium and let it knead for seven to eight minutes. During this time, the dough may appear soft and sticky, but just let it go and it should become smooth and elastic and supple. But even if you measure everything exactly, it might end up a little bit too hydrated like mine is. Not to worry, because we're just going to turn it out onto a lightly floured work surface and knead for an additional one to two minutes until a nice soft, tacky, but not sticky consistency is achieved. As you can see, after my noodle experience last week, I'm something of a kneading master. And very quickly, you'll see that the dough becomes light and bouncy and handleable. Go ahead and stretch it into a taut little ball that we're going to let rise in a lightly oiled bowl. And like most pizza doughs, it will become even more handleable after hanging out in the bowl for 60 to 90 minutes or until doubled in size. Just give it a little toss around to make sure that it's coated in oil, cover with plastic wrap, and let it hang out at room temperature for about an hour until it looks like this. It's very rare that I have a before and after at the ready like that. I'm kind of proud of myself, but the truth is that I'm making two pizzas. Next up comes the choice of baking vessel, and while Chicago pizzerias generally use aluminum pans, at home our best bet is cast iron, which along with a liberal lubrication of vegetable oil is going to help our pizza brown more robustly. Go ahead and grease up your hands as well and gently coax the dough out of the bowl and into the awaiting cast iron pan, where we're going to begin coaxing it into the shape of a pizza, or at least what Chicago calls a pizza. Just gently press and stretch the dough out and try to push it up against the sides of the pan. It's going to resist a little at first, but that's okay. We're going to let this rest under cover of plastic wrap for 20 to 30 minutes until the gluten relaxes and we can more properly form the crust. Just enough time to talk about tomato sauce. Chicago style tomato sauce is generally very thick and sweet and has big old chunks of tomato in it. So we're starting with one 28 ounce can of whole San Marzano tomatoes. Boop. Hope I didn't squirt you there. We're putting them in a bowl and crushing them by hand until they're down to bite-sized pieces. John specifies that Chicago-style pizza uses uncooked marinara sauce, but I just don't think that's possible, and that tomatoes don't really become sauce until you cook them. So we're just going to make a rudimentary marinara sauce by finely chopping half a white onion, nice and fine, we don't want big old chunks of onion, and smashing and peeling a few cloves of garlic in preparation for crushing. We've made tomato sauce several times on this show, so I'm just going to kind of breeze through it. Into a high-walled saute pan goes a few tablespoons of olive oil, that we're going to heat over medium until shimmering, adding our chopped onion and sweating for two to three minutes or until translucent around the edges, adding our crushed garlic and sauteing for an additional minute until fragrant, adding a pinch of crushed red pepper flake, a little shake of oregano, and a little shake of basil, oh, big shake of basil, along with two to three tablespoons of tomato paste to deepen the flavor. We're going to saute that together for an additional minute until everything smells nice and really good, and then we're going to add the crushed tomatoes, along with a tablespoon of sugar to achieve that nice, sweet Chicago-style sauce, simmering for 20 to 30 minutes, stirring regularly 
regularly to prevent scorching over medium heat until the raw tomato flavor has cooked off and the sauce is nice and thick, and when you drag a spoon through it, it parts like the Red Sea. <laughs> you get it? A, I thought it was funny. And by this time, our dough should be nice and relaxed, and we should be able to press it up against the sides of the pan, and it should hold its shape with ease. Also, I forgot to mention, this is a recipe for a 12-inch cast iron skillet, or enough to feed roughly 30 to 35 people. Now, every Chicago pizza I've ever seen uses sliced deli-style cheese. So we're gonna start with a thin layer of provolone, followed by a nice thick layer of sliced low-moisture mozzarella. I think they use the deli-style cheese because it inherently has less moisture, which you don't want in a pizza this thick and badass. And feel free to go a little bit overboard with cheese, especially if you want an epic cheese stretch. And as John so devastatingly pointed out, the sauce goes confoundingly atop the cheese. So go ahead and generously smear it on top, and make sure you make a double batch of sauce if you're making two pizzas. Once the cheese is all hidden, we're gonna hit the pizza with two finishing moves. First, a generous sprinkling of pre-grated Parmesan, and then a generous drizzling of olive oil, both on the sauce and around the edge of the crust. Because it's not like we're trying to be healthy here, I mean this pizza weighs like five, six pounds. And it's finally time for it to go into a preheated 425 degree Fahrenheit oven for 25 to 35 minutes, rotating once during baking until this happens. Run a thin spatula around the outside edge to make sure that there's no stickage, and then it's time for the heroic act of getting the pizza out the pan. You just have to trust the pizza's structural integrity and out it will go. And then you want to wait at least 10 minutes before cutting in and serving. I did not wait 10 minutes. I was hungry and I had hungry friends in the other room, and this is what happened. A really, really good looking cheese stretch for the thumb thumbnail, and then kind of an over-sloppy, under-sauced pizza flood. Not that you're gonna hear me complaining, because despite the stringiness of this affair, it was completely delicious. The cheese, of course, was cheesy, the sauce, of course, was saucy, but the crust is what separates good Chicago style from bad Chicago style. Hang on, I'm just gonna take a quick prophylactic measure here. But yeah, like I was saying, the crust is light and crunchy, and it has a nice chew to it without being bready or stodgy. I know I didn't use butter in the crust, but it is somehow buttery and flaky, making it an obvious and immediate member of the clean plate club at the expense of my mouth, which was severely burned. And once the pizza cools off, we can more closely examine its structure and composition. As you can see, the crust is thick without being too dense, the cheese and toppings are ubiquitous, and I would put it toe-to-toe -to -toe with the restaurant pizza any day. It looks like they sauced a little bit more heavily than me, but everything else is pretty spot on. But this just wouldn't be stuffed pizza without some stuffing, so I have some mild Italian sausage here that I'm removing from its casings and patting into a patty. And then it's the same procedure as before, pat out the dough into an oiled pan, let it rest for 20 to 30 minutes while you make the sauce, then finish patting it out into its final shape. And then before we lay down the cheese, we're gonna start by laying down the sausage. And yeah, this is raw sausage, which is weird, I know. But this pizza spends plenty of time in the oven, so it will cook completely. Once the sausage is spread out into a nice even layer, it's topped with cheese, sauce, and more cheese. Same cook time and temperature, 425 Fahrenheit for 25 to 35 minutes. And voila, the same thing, but with sausage. And let me tell you right now, I'm a huge fan of both John Stewart and New York style pizza, but I do I do think Chicago pizza is still pizza in its own right. It's a product of its environment. New York style pizza would turn into a cheesy icicle if exposed to the air in Chicago for even one minute. That being said, I'd never say that it's better than New York style because that'd be insane. But just like every pizza on this crazy blue marble floating through space, it has a right to exist and to find its own happiness. And with that said, there's only one thing left to try, John's suggested preparation with some canned onions on top. And I gotta say, it's not bad. I mean, it's better than California pizza. Hey folks, I'm very excited to announce that, oh, to announce that I have received my first advanced copy of my book. And even more than before, I am super excited and proud to share it with you. This is the Binging with Babish companion cookbook and it features the first 100 recipes from the show. It's got lots of fun facts, beautiful burger models, gorgeous photography, peeks behind the scenes, and an extremely touching forward by John Favreau. You can pre-order your copy in the video description below for access to exclusive content before the book comes out October 22nd, as well as score tickets to my nationwide book tour. Check it out and I will see you guys on the road in two weeks. Thank you.